This video is sponsored by Card Kingdom. You can find all the cards in this video in their store by using the links in the description below. Hi everyone, I'm Nitsa Hone, and it's time for another MTG Top 10, the series where I rank cards based on their historical performance at Magic's highest level of competition. Today, we're going to take a look at Magic's most powerful counterspells. Counterspells have been part of Magic since the beginning. When you counter a spell, that means it gets put into the graveyard without resolving. Counterspells are one of the core strategies for control decks. Most of the time I use a scoring system to reward cards for top 8 major Magic events, but sometimes I like to look at these most overpowered top 10s, where I throw that scoring system out the window, and instead I look at the cards that are simply the most powerful in a particular category. Banned cards in particular are at a big disadvantage in my usual top 10s, so this type of list gives them a chance to shine. Keep in mind that that means this is not a ranking of cards that have just seen a lot of play. Those are the kinds of cards that get rewarded in my more typical top 10s, so doing the same thing here wouldn't make much sense, although obviously there is some overlap. So for a card to end up here, it either needs to have been banned or restricted in at least one format, or alternatively, be a card that has helped define a format or formats based on how much it's played. All right, without further ado, here are my picks for the 10 most overpowered counterspells ever printed. At number 10, it's Counterbalance. For two blue mana, this enchantment triggers every time an opponent plays a spell. When they do, you get to reveal the top card of your library, and if your opponent's spell has the same mana value as the card you reveal, that spell gets countered. It may sound difficult to set this up, but it's been featured prominently in both Extended and Legacy, and in both cases, Sensei's Divining Top is what unlocked its full potential. The top lets you manipulate the top of your library a ton, and because there are so many cheap spells in those formats, it really isn't that hard to set things up so that you can counter opposing spells a huge chunk of the time. While Counterbalance itself never got banned, the top did get banned in Extended, Modern, and Legacy, at least in part because of how it combined with Counterbalance. The combo was particularly nasty alongside Miracles, because this gave you another great reason to manipulate your library. Without the top, Counterbalance certainly isn't busted, but even in post-top Legacy, Counterbalance is still an important card in the format, where Dragon's Rage Channeler, Brainstorm, and Ponder give you some control over the top of your library. At number 9, it's Memory Lapse, which is banned in Historic. For one generic in a blue, it counters a spell, and if the spell is countered that way, you put it on top of its owner's library instead of into that player's graveyard. A hard counter for one generic in a blue is pretty awesome, and while putting the card on top of your opponent's library does mean they're likely to draw it again, you do still trade one for one, and there are plenty of situations where you'd rather put a card on top of your opponent's library than into their graveyard anyway. Memory Lapse was heavily played in control decks in Block Standard and Extended, and when it got reprinted in Strixhaven's Mystical Archive, it became legal in Magic Arena's Historic format. While they preemptively banned several Mystical Archive cards in Historic, Memory Lapse was somehow a card that they overlooked, and it made control decks in the format completely absurd. Six of the top eight decks at the Strixhaven Championship were packing the card, and it quickly became evident that it was way too good for Historic, and it got banned. At number 8, I've got the Counterspell that started it all, and still one of the most powerful ones ever printed. For 2 blue, it's an instant that lets you counter target spell. Spending 2 mana just to say no to your opponent is great, and it feels especially awesome when your opponent is trying to do something that costs more than 2 mana. Funnily enough, Counterspell did get preemptively banned in Historic when it appeared in the Mystical Archive. While Counterspell has only ever been banned in Historic, it has been a format-defining card in countless standard formats, and it's still heavily played in both Modern and Legacy. It's also the fifth most heavily played card in all of Commander. Not just the fifth highest blue card, fifth highest card, period. All that play, coupled with the ban in Historic, makes it pretty clear that the original Counterspell is still one of the best Counterspells of all time. At number 7, it's Force of Negation, the first of several free counter spells to make the list. It costs 1 generic and 2 blue to counter a non-creature spell, and that spell also gets exiled. And if it isn't your turn, you can instead exile a blue card from your hand, rather than pay the mana for Force of Negation. Obviously paying the full 3 mana for this is pretty rough, since it's basically negate, but free counter spells are amazing, as they give you a way to interact even when you're completely tapped out. The alternate cost does only work during your opponent's turn, but that's a good thing overall for Magic, because if combo players could cast this for free while they're going off, it would be a pretty big problem. It's from Modern Horizons 2, so the only 60 card formats it's legal in are Modern Legacy and Vintage. It isn't banned anywhere, but it's an incredibly important card that is heavily played in all three of the formats it's legal in. 
Just over the last four months, it's appeared in 26% of all modern decks, 12.4% of legacy decks, and 59.5% of vintage decks. That's not going to change anytime soon. At number 6, I've got Areo Soratami Ascendant, who's banned in Commander. For one generic and a blue, Areo is a 1 1 flyer. Whenever a fourth spell of a turn gets played, you flip Areo, which is basically transforming, but they hadn't introduced double faced cards yet, so you just rotated the card. And then it becomes a legendary enchantment called Areo's Essence that counters the first spell played by each opponent on each turn. While Areo has never been a threat in 60 card formats, it's pretty insane in Commander. First, it's way easier to flip there. The more players there are, the more likely it is that four spells get cast in a single turn. Then once it does become an enchantment, it has an effect that makes life difficult for all of your opponents. It's even really hard to deal with, as your opponent would have to fire off two spells in a turn just to make it happen. Areo is especially problematic if you use it as your Commander, as it'll keep coming back and transforming all the time. In some cases, I think there are legendary creatures banned in Commander that it would make sense to bring back the banned only as Commander rule for, so that players had access to the card, at least in their deck, but this isn't one of them. It's too oppressive in the format, even as a card in your deck. At number 5, it's Chalice of the Void, which is restricted in Vintage and banned in Historic Brawl. This artifact costs XX, enters the battlefield with X charge counters on it, and whenever a player casts a spell with a mana value equal to the number of charge counters on the chalice, that spell gets countered. Chalice is a very important card in every format it's legal in, and if you're playing a deck with a preponderance of cards that cost one or two, which is, frankly, just most decks in those formats, you better have a way to deal with Chalice or your entire game plan will get shut down. The fact it's colorless means that every single deck that wants access to the Chalice can have it too, making it one of the most heavily played cards in modern legacy and vintage. Chalice is so oppressive that it's even restricted to one per deck in Magic's most powerful format, Vintage, that format's fast mana can let you power out a Chalice very early in the game, especially in Workshop decks, and even just playing the Chalice on zero charge counters can be powerful in Vintage, as that will counter plenty of cards. At number 4, it's Daze, which is banned in Popper. For one generic and a blue, it counters a spell unless its controller pays one, but it's another free counter spell, and for this one, you don't even have to two for one yourself. You just return an island to your hand. Sure, it's not a hard counter, but because it's so easy to cast, it isn't hard to find just the right spell for Daze to counter. While Popper is the only format it's ever been banned or restricted in, it was a very important card in Block Standard and Extended, and it's been a staple in Legacy for more than two decades. And if you want the more recent past, over the last four months, it's appeared in 35% of all Legacy decks. At number three, I've got Mana Drain, which is banned in Legacy. For two blue mana, Mana Drain counters a spell, and then at the beginning of your next main phase, you get an amount of colorless equal to that spell's mana value. Today, Mana Drain is just a strictly better counter spell. Back when it was printed in 1994, it was a little more complicated. This is because Mana Burn was a thing, which meant if you had unused mana at the end of a phase, you took one damage for each unused mana. In other words, Mana Drain was painful sometimes, but even back then, Mana Drain was an amazing card. I mean, it got banned in Legacy in 2004, and Mana Burn was still a thing then. Today, without Mana Burn, Mana Drain is even better, and the only 60-card format it's legal in is Vintage, and while I wouldn't go so far as to call it a staple there, it does see play in Magic's most powerful format. At number two, it's Mental Misstep, our third free counter spell. This one costs one blue Phyrexian mana, which means you can pay for it with a single blue mana or with two life. It counters a spell with a mana value of one. That might sound too narrow, but because so many spells have a mana value of one in 60 card formats, this ends up being able to counter a huge chunk of spells. It's kind of like how Chalice of the Void seems like it wouldn't counter enough stuff, but it does in a format where there are tons of cheap, powerful spells. What's worse is, when Mental Misstep was legal in 60 card formats, many games came down to a battle between Mental Missteps, since decks of every color could play it. This ultimately led to Misstep getting banned and extended, and it remains banned in Modern and Legacy today and restricted in Vintage. In fact, of any of the counter spells on this list, it's banned or restricted in the most formats. And at number one, I've got Force of Will. It actually isn't banned anywhere, making it the first card to come in at number one on one of these most overpowered lists to never have been banned anywhere, but it's pretty hard not to include Force of Will at the top of any list about counter magic because it's just the best counter spell ever printed. For three generic and two blue, it counters a spell. But of course, it has an alternate cost. You can pay one life and exile a blue card from your hand to cast it instead. Yep, 
This is another free counter spell, and really the one that started it all. I've already explained what made free counter magic so great, but all the examples of it we've seen so far had some sort of restriction. Mental Misstep can only hit one mana spells. Daze can let your opponent pay one generic mana to ignore it, and you have to have an island in play. So you're not able to use it before your first turn. And Force of Negation has two huge restrictions. It can only hit non-creature spells, and you can only play it for free during your opponent's turn. Force of Will can just pretty much always do its thing, even when you have no permanence in play. And that's a huge deal. Such a huge deal that it's been heavily played in any format it's ever been legal in, and it's also always been a staple in both Legacy and Vintage. It sees play in more than half of all Legacy decks, and the number is even higher in Vintage. Over the last four months, the only cards that have appeared in more Vintage decks are Black Lotus, Mox Sapphire, and Mox Jet. That's right, Force of Will sees more play in Vintage than some pieces of power do. Things don't end with 60 card formats either, it's also incredibly heavily played in Commander. So despite never having been banned, Legacy and Vintage are formats that have very much warped around Force of Will, and that's been true for the entire history of both formats. And if that's not an overpowered counterspell, I don't know what is. So those are my picks for the 10 most overpowered counterspells ever printed. If you're interested in countering some spells, check out the description, where you can find a Direct Card Kingdom link for each card that appeared in the video. If you want to catch up on past MTG Top 10s, you should see a playlist on your screen shortly. And if you want to stay aware of future MTG Top 10s, don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching. <laughs>